Hello, I'm John Sanders with Bond and Vaccaro in Washington, D.C. Uh, here at the MFM Annual Conference in Jacksonville on May 20th, uh, 2024. And I'm delighted to get some office hours, or I guess I should say some office minutes, with Brand uh, the Executive Director for Finance Digital Strategy uh, at Oracle. Brandon just finished a very informative session on um, uh, finance digital strategy and how it uh, affects uh, financial officers in the, uh, in the media field. And we're here just to kind of sum up uh, because uh, hopefully this will be useful for people who not, may not have had an opportunity to be here. Uh, just kind of starting off, uh, it's often said that people um, learn most effectively when they can sit from the cup of knowledge uh, information on AI has been coming so rapidly that I feel like we're getting uh, fed with a high velocity fire hose. And um, I was just hoping you could maybe start off by talking about from your perspective, how should a CFO be looking at, at AI yeah. now? Yeah, I think that's a good question. And um, I, I share your uh, point of view that uh, it feels like fire hose mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, maybe feels a little too high level mm -hmm. uh, as well. And that's one of the things I liked about the session was just the opportunity to uh, dig a little deeper, uh, be um, you know very practical, right, about how we apply uh, AI in the office of the CFO. Um, I, I think the uh, the main thing I would want to communicate to anybody, any executive who is considering AI uh, for their finance department is um, the the words that they're hearing in conferences. And Media and the radio, many of them are just building blocks of the technology, right? They are really just the pieces that you can build a solution out of. And what I think we do miss in the conversation sometimes, that I really want to, to drive home with people is the most important thing to do as an executive in finance is understand the use case for AI, right? That means that you don't necessarily need to understand how the nuts and bolts of the computer science work, right? What you need to understand is the field is progressing and there are ways to apply this and then make the connection to how you apply it, right, in, in finance. I would say that's actually the most important thing. So are there some say. use cases now that are more important than others? Can you narrow those down into a couple of different categories? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think there's, um, uh, uh, some folks may not realize that um, first wave AI is already with us, right? Uh, you can already use it. Everybody's very excited, obviously, about ChatGPT, long, uh, you know, large language models. That's fantastic. Um, that will progress in the future. You will grow that into your company. But there are so many things now that you can do with artificial intelligence. Um, a few that we talked about in the in the session that I think are really important is the idea of being able to model unfamiliar revenue streams. Um, what I mean by that is so many of us in the, in the media uh, industry, they are in the position of taking the content that they have and now distributing it on new channels. And those new channels all behave a little differently from a revenue perspective. And so AI can help you model things that you're unfamiliar with at this point. You don't understand the business drivers, right? Um, a second place I think is very important is uh, drilling into just, just how efficient and just how speedy can we in the back office. We should be looking at AI and trying to figure out how we kind of have a predictive close, um, have, have the numbers in front of us before day one, or at least a preliminary version. And then finally, AI can really help us make decisions, especially around projects, where to invest, where to buy content, where to build content. And you can do that by having kind of a facts-based model that shows you how things are performed in the past. What does this new project look like? Which one does it look like the most? Doing that comparison is also something that AI can help with. So in prior conferences, there's, there's always some kind of a fad or a buzzword. And for the, um, for the last couple of years, it was blockchain mm -hmm. and how everything would be pre-audited. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure anybody actually understood what blockchain was. Uh, frankly, I'm not even sure it was understandable what it was, but uh, for whatever reason, it's dropped off the agenda. Yeah. But it sounds like, um, AI has the ability to do kind of that self-auditing, so by the end of the period, you're already pretty much done yeah. uh, in an effective way. Yeah, and, and the, um, the generative AI piece, will, which will, will get stronger and stronger, particularly for the back office as we go along, um, is something that will allow your platforms to 
understand the context behind your data. Understand the context behind a forecast, right? That will make it more and more useful. Your people will still be in control, right? Your people will still be in the driver's seat. We're not automating decisions here, right? We are automating intelligence. We're automating the, uh, the ability to get to that decision point more quickly. So what are the areas in a financial organization where AI will be not so useful? Uh, excellent question. Um, I, the first thing that I would point to is if you do not have and don't feel like you can get background data, it's probably not the great, best place to start, right? All of these technologies are built on having a knowledge base, right? I say that generally because you have models now that can read a lot more than data off a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. right? Um, but at the end of the day, those knowledge bases, they, those are what actually make that, you know, that technique, that method intelligent. So start where you have data, and I would also say just be careful with trying to boil the ocean. Um, and every time we start into a new technology, the right way to start is probably to take bite-sized pieces. That's good for you to understand the technology. It's good for your people in your organization from an adoption perspective as well. Well, I mean, another thing, you know, all industries have life cycles. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the themes this year, linear, uh, television, a lot of the sectives are indeed maturing. And uh, one of the things one does uh, is to try and look for new value in what I might call older assets. And so most of the companies here have programming libraries. Yeah. And that sounds like one of the most, like it would be a very fertile no, field to uh, mine and look for how it could be repurposed and where it could, where it could be sold. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, the, those, those content assets, um, probably the most valuable thing that many of these companies, right, uh, own. And there's a whole archive, there's a whole library. That's the knowledge base, right, that we're talking about. Whether you're in the position of trying to reuse or, or uh, re-leverage content that you already own, or whether you're in the position of trying to make a decision about new content, I think it's applicable in both cases. Uh, yeah, I think you used the word narrative a bunch of times, talking about closing and how AI could come into play. Yeah. Um, just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, narrative is a space uh, for Oracle, for anybody um, in, uh, you know, in this field that is both important now and going to grow later. The way I described it in the session is, uh, somebody asked a question, uh, where should I start, mm -hmm. all right? And I said, do narrative reporting, because right now it's a stream but in the future, it will be a river, right? Because that's the space where, where finance tells the story behind the numbers, where they give meaning to the graphs and the charts, right? And that is also happens to be the space that Gen, I, Gen AI will have the greatest impact on going uh, forward. So my advice, get in there now, right? And as Gen AI capabilities improve, right? You just improve, improve right along with it. So when we were chatting uh, beforehand, one, one thing you and I have in common is that we are the fathers of nothing but sons. Uh, and as a consequence, have built a great talent set in marshalling uh, energetic, uh, sometimes difficult to control teams. So that might lead to the, to the kind of the final question about uh, what executives should bear in mind when they're starting to adopt uh, AI in their financial organization. Uh, and how much discipline do they need to engender uh, on the different layers and different sectors of their own staffs? No, it's a, it's a very good question. It's an adoption question. It's a culture question. Um, and I'm, I, you know, I believe that, that uh, while all companies are the same, all companies are also quite mm -hmm. different. And uh, it is certainly the place you know, of the, the finance executive to kind of hit the right tone when it comes to it. Um, three things I would point out. Um, number one uh, it is really going to be your governance and security. Uh, just understanding the fact that uh, this is a place where you need built-in governance and security, right? Um, it is something that could get out of hand, but it's not going to if you're already reusing the infrastructure you've probably already built or already own, right, around governance and security. So don't do it off in a corner. Do it on the platforms, right? In your, in your workflow. Um, then I would also say to, uh, you know, you need to focus on uh, the fact that you've got to set up in the beginning what you actually intend to 
uh, accomplish, right? Just measurable, measurable results uh, that you can go back to time and again. Not necessarily to say, oh, we succeeded or we failed, but to adjust course, right, as you're deploying. And really the final one is just keeping your people in control. Um, it's not always true that people are, are telling you what's on their mind. And, uh, and people are worried, right, about the impact of AI on their roles. Bringing them in now, bringing them along for the ride, and celebrating your adopters and your advocates, those are all, I think, good, good advice for a CFO. Well, uh, Brandon, uh, we have, uh, I, I feel like we hit that sweet spot where I wasn't frustrated by sipping too slowly, okay. nor barraged by the fire hose, just got that, that great chug of information. Good. And uh, thank you so much, uh, not only for this encapsulation, but also for the great session beforehand. Absolutely. It was fun. It was Best fun. of luck with your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you.